Hello, this video will cover section 4.4, logarithmic and exponential equations. For this section, we're going to use the rules that we learned previously um, from sections 4.1, 4.2, 4.3. So we're going to be using the product rule, the quotient rule, the power rule, and also we're going to be converting from exponential to logarithmic and vice versa. So for example one, we're going to be using the rule that states that um, if you have a logarithmic expression such as this one, and you are saying that the two logarithms are equal to each other, so you're saying the log of u base a is equal to the log of v base a. So if that is the case, because the base is equal, then you could assume that the arguments <clears throat> u and v are also equal to each other. They must be equal. And of course, we have the rules that um, u, v, and a are positive real numbers, and also a, which is a base, cannot equal to 1. Now, I do want to remind you about the logarithmic function, the parent function, and for that one, the domain is all positive numbers from 0 to infinity. So because of that, whenever we're solving a logarithmic equation, we're going to have to see if our answer fits into this domain. So let's get started with example one. On the left side, we have one logarithmic expression. On the right side, we have two. So the first thing I have to do is condense the left side. I'm sorry, the right side. So we will have log of x is equal to the log of x plus 3 divided by x minus 1. And the reason I'm converting that into the log of a quotient is because we have the difference of two logs. So now that we have one log on each side. Um, if remember, if you don't have a base, you assume it's a 10. It's a common log. And now what I can say is that the arguments, which is x and x plus 3 divided by x minus 1, are equal to each other. So from here, we can say that x minus 1, it's dividing x plus 3. And what I'm going to do is just take it across the other side, and it will be doing the inverse operation. So that will be x minus 1 multiplying x. Here on my right side, I still have that expression x plus 3. Now from here, we are going to distribute the x. Well, the second step, let's write it down. We um, well, we use the property. So use log property. Our third step, we multiplied by x minus 1 to get it out of the denominator. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and actually perform the multiplication, but we have to be careful and distribute it to x and also to negative 1. So x times x will be x squared. 
and x times negative 1 is negative x. So here we have x plus 3. Now we do have a quadratic equation and what we need to do when you have a quadratic you need to equal one side to zero. So that will be um, this positive x. If we take that across the equal sign, it will become negative x. And here, this positive 3 will become negative 3. And now all we have left on the right side is 0. Now what I'm going to do is combine like terms here. So that will be x squared minus 2x minus 3 and that is equal to zero. Now, we could solve a, quadra a quadratic equation by factoring it, by using the quadratic formula, um, by, I don't know, you could also graph it and look at the x-intercepts because those are the solutions. So what I'm going to do is factor, and that will be the product of two binomials, so it will be and of course equaling zero. So the factors of negative three are just one and three. Since the number is negative, we are gonna have a positive and a negative factor. And the reason, um, sorry, the way we know which one carries the negative sign will be the number with the biggest absolute value because we need to, um, when we combine the numbers, we need to get negative two. So we're gonna put negative three here and positive one here. From here, we can use the property that states that you can equal each factor to zero and solve for x one at a time. So x is equal to negative one. For the other factor, x minus three is equal to zero. So that will be x is equal to positive three. Now remember what I said about the domain of a logarithmic function. And so because of that, um, we're going to discard this solution, negative one, because if we were to substitute negative one back into this expression, log base 10 of negative one, um, you will get an error because the function is not defined for negative numbers. And so the only solution to this problem, to this example, is x equals 3, meaning that 3 will be the only number that you could substitute here and here and here and still get a, a true statement. So we're going to move on to the next problem. And here we could use this property or we could also change to exponential form. So if we have something like log of u base a, equals, I don't know, y, we could change that into an exponential expression by saying, a to the power y is equal to u. So remember, the base of a logarith logarithm is also the base of an exponential. The argument where you take the log off is the answer of your exponential expression. And then your exponent, it comes from here. So we're going to be using that with example two. And what I'm going to do is change it to a logarith logarithmic expression. So the base here is five. So five to the power two is equal to this argument, the whole thing in parentheses.
2x minus 3. Now, 5 squared is, remember, 5 times 5. So that's one. And that's equal to x minus 3. So what I'm going to do is leave my times 5 here. And I'm going to take this negative 3 across, which is subtracting from the x. On the other side, it's going to be doing the inverse operation. So adding 3, we have 2x here. So 25 plus 3 is 28. That is equal to 2x. And the 2 is multiplying to the x. So we need to use the inverse operation. So we need to divide the 28. And that will give me x is equal to 14. And that is the solution. You could check if it works, but yes, it will work because if you substitute it in here, 2 times 14, that will give me um, 28. So then 28 minus 3 will be 25. And so this will be the log of 25 base 5 is equal to 2 because you will have to raise 5 to the second power to give you 25. So in this case, we don't have to worry if the solution is valid or not. It is positive. The next expression, um, what I'm going to do is take this logarithmic expression to the other side. And here is subtracting from the 2. So on the other side, it will be adding. And so this will be oh no. Okay, so I'm going to do that again. So the log of x minus 16 plus the log of x minus 1 <clears throat> is equal. Let's not forget if we had a number 2 here. Okay, so now that we have the sum of two logs or the addition of two logs, we can condense those into one single logarithmic expression. And in this case, we're going to have base 10. And this is going to be the log of a product, x minus 16, times x minus 1 is equal to 2. Now, what I'm going to do is convert this into a logarithmic expression. I'm sorry, exponential. So it will be 10 to the power 2 is equal to the product of x minus 16 times x minus 1. So 10 squared is going to be 100. And here we have x minus 16, x minus 1. So that will be x squared minus x minus 16x plus 1. If we combine like terms here, that will be x squared minus 17x plus 1. Again, we have a quadratic, so we need to equal one side to 0, which means that this positive 100 is going to become negative 100. And I just realized I made a mistake right here. So this should be negative 16 times negative 1 is positive 16. So I need a 6 right here. Okay, so x squared minus 7x minus 84. Now that we have the quadratic equation equaling 0, we can go ahead and try to factor it. And that will be x 
plus certain number and x minus certain number because the sign is negative. Factors of 84, we could have 1 and negative 84. I know the larger, the number with that larger absolute value will carry a negative sign because we need negative 17 when we add the numbers. Uh, we could also have 2, positive 2, and negative 42. We could have positive 3 and negative 28. We could have positive 4 and negative 21. Or we could have positive 6 and negative 21. I'm actually just going to divide it with my calculator. Oh, 14. Okay. And in fact, I didn't even need that one. 6 and negative 14. I say I didn't need to figure that out because the answer was here. So it was positive 4 and negative 21. Why? Because 4 minus 21 will give us that negative 17 that we need here in the middle for the middle term. So now, once we have our two factors, uh, remember we take each factor equal it to zero. So we have x plus 4. Equals zero, so that means that x is equal to negative 4. And for our other factor, x minus 21 equals zero x will be equal to plus 21. This problem is similar to the other because this negative solution is not going to work for us. If you were to substitute it here in place of the x, you will be finding the log of a negative 5, which is not within our domain. And so we discard the solution. We don't use it. You don't even enter it on my math lab. The only one you need is x equals 21. And that's it. Now let's move on to problem C, and we're going to go ahead and um, condense or write as a single logarithm. So this is the log base 2 of x divided by x minus 1. So this becomes the difference of two logs becomes the log of a quotient. And we have a 1 here. Now I'm going to convert this to an exponential expression. So 2 to the power 1 will equal x divided by x minus 1. Now we're going to take this denominator, x minus 1, which is dividing on the right side. If I take it across the other side, it's going to be multiplying 2 and the number 2. And so here I'm going to go ahead and take the two times x. And then 2 times negative 1. And then we have this x right here. Okay, so from here, what I can do is take my positive 2x here, take this positive x across the equal sign, so it becomes negative x, goes from adding to subtracting. And then this negative 2, which is subtracting on the left side, once I take it across the equal, it becomes positive. Now, if I combine like terms here, 2x minus 1x will give me 1x positive. And that is equal 
to whatever we had left here, too. And that will be the answer for that question. Now, with the next um, example, now we're dealing with an exponential equation. And just to review that function, the graph of that function looks like that. And the domain happens to be all real numbers, meaning you can have a positive, a negative, it could be zero, your exponent could be any number. Positive, negative, zero, rational, irrational, um, a fraction, a decimal, and it will be okay. So once we solve this equation, we don't really need to worry if the solution will work because this could be positive or negative. So what we're going to do first is we're going to write the powers of 2. And so that will be 2 to the first power is equal to 2. 2 to the second power is 4. 2 to the third power is equal to 8. 2 to the fourth power is equal to 16. Two to the fifth, and we don't need them for this question, but you may need them for the homework, is equal to 32. And then we have two to the power six will be equal to 64. Two to the power seven is equal to 128. Uh, 2 to the power 8 is equal to 256, and of course, this keeps going and going. If you don't know what's next, you could put it on the calculator and find it that way. So, what I'm going to do here is use the powers of 3. And so, we have that 3 to the power 1 is equal to 3. 3 to the power 2 is equal to 9. And 2, not 2, but 3 to the power 3 is equal to 27. Uh, let's do one more. 3 to the power 4 is equal to 81. Now, what are, why are we doing that? Well, because sometimes these exponential equations are a lot easier to solve if you are able to write the left and the right side using the same base. And we're going to use base 3. So what I'm going to use, instead of 9, I'm going to use 3 square because 9 is equal to 3 square. So 3 square. However, we cannot forget about the exponent that we have here, x. And here, instead of 27, we are going to use 3 to the power 3. Now that we have 3 and 3, well, actually, before that, let's simplify it a little more. And so this will be 2, 3 squared raised to the power x is equivalent to 3 to the power 2x. When you have the power of a power, you multiply the two numbers or expressions. And here we have 3 to the power 3. Now we know that the 3 on the left side must be equal to the 3 on the right side here and in any other country. So what we assume is that 2x equal to 3, just like we had it here on this row. If a is equal to a, then the exponents 
must also be equal. So here we have 2x is equal to 3, so then x will be equal to 3 divided by 2. And you should know that there will be a 100% chance that I will give you a question like that on your exam. So make sure you do the ones on your homework, and that's how you know what questions I could use on your test. So now we're going to move on to the next one. And for this one here, we have that the base, um, the left side is just 3 to the power x, while the right side is 5. And so those two numbers, first of all, they're prime. We cannot even factor them. And moreover, there's no way that we could um, rewrite them with um, the same base. And so what we're going to have to use here is that power property that states that the exponent could be brought to the front and becomes the coefficient. And before that, the first step is going to be to take the natural log on both sides. So it will go like this, natural log of 3 to the x is equal to the natural log of 5. So now, because, um, well, actually, yes, we're going to do the following. We're going to take this exponent to the front. So now it becomes the coefficient. So x times natural log of 3. Remember, those two are multiplying each other. And here we have the natural log of 5. Now from here, we need to isolate x. And so what we're going to do is do the inverse operation of what natural log of 3 is and to the x on the left side. In other words, we're going to divide because if we take this to the other side of the equal sign, it will change to its inverse operation, so it will be dividing. Now, when you enter this on your calculator, make sure just take the change of base, natural log of 5, divide it by the natural log of 3. You must press natural log twice. Do not get confused with natural log of 5 over 3. That will be wrong. And so if my math lab is asking you for the exact answer, this is the exact answer right here. No approximations. If they ask you to approximate, just make sure you um, read to how many decimal places they want you to approximate your answer to. Because you could have the right answer and just not round it correctly. And that gives me 1.46. If I round to three decimal places. Okay, so this is just a reminder that that is not equal to that and it's not equal to that. Okay, it's not equal.
Okay, on the next question, we have the base three and the base four. And so we could rewrite four as two square, but there's no way we could rewrite three since it is already a prime number. So what we're going to do instead is use 50 ln, the natural log, again, of both of them on both sides. That's what we will do. So natural log of three to the power two x minus one is equal to the natural log of four to the power x plus two. Now what we're gonna do is use the power rule and so we're going to take the exponents, so 2x minus 1, we take to the front, it becomes the coefficient, so it's that times the natural log of 3. And that is equal, we'll do the same with the right side, x plus 2, we take it to the front, so x plus 2 times the natural log of 4. Now what I need to do here is distribute and so the natural log of 3 is just one number. It's going to multiply 2x and so that will be 2x times the natural log of 3. Then we have natural log of 3 times negative 1 so that would be negative natural log of 3. Now on this side, we multiply natural log of 4 times x, so x times natural log 4, and then we do the same with natural log 4 times 2, so that is 2 times the natural log of 4. Now what I want to do now is, um, remember this, are multiplying, multiplying. What I want to do is move my terms so that I have the ones that contain x on the left side. And so that will go like this. 2x natural log of 3 uh, minus x times natural log of 4. And that is because um, the x natural log 4 has an invisible plus in front of it. In other words, it's performing an addition on the right side. So on the left side, it will be subtracting inverse operations. Now here on the right side, I still have 2 natural log 4. And I'm going to take this negative natural log 3 to the right side. So we'll be adding. and the reason I did that is so that I can x out of those two terms. This is one term, this is the second term. Both of them contain the factor x, so I can factor that out. And if I factor it from my first term from here, I will still have 2 times natural log of 3. And if I factor x from here, I will still have negative natural. So on my left side, I have 2 times the natural log. When you enter on the calculator, the um, number that you take the log of needs to be in parentheses. Okay, 
So now we have x being multiplied by all this stuff here. And so what I need to do is take it across all of this. And since it is multiplying to the x on the left side, once we take it across, it will be dividing. So I'm going to write what I have here first. So on the right side, 2 natural log of 4 plus natural log of 3, and then divided by all this stuff here. Now, 3 minus natural log of 4. And please do not get excited and start canceling things. I know it might look a little tempting. You might want to cancel number 2 from the numerator and denominator, but you cannot do that because you have a plus and a minus here. And so you actually have to enter all of this on the calculator in this way. We need to enclose the numerator in parentheses, and we also need to enclose the denominator in parentheses. If you don't do that, the calculator will not know what to divide. So this will be parentheses and then 2, and then you enter your natural log key, you enter 4, and then plus natural log again, and then 3, and then you close your parentheses to enclose the numerator, then you need to use the division key, and then open parentheses again. I'm going to write it down here because I don't have space. And then we enter the denominator. So 2 natural log of 3 minus natural log of 4. And then, of course, you need to close parentheses again to enclose the denominator. So if we enter all of that, I don't have the solution, so I'm going to enter it on the calculator. It's going to take me a little bit. Okay, so what I got was 4.774, if I round to three decimal places. And so that will be the answer, approximately. If my math lab was to ask you, enter the exact answer, that exact answer will be this whole expression. All of it without approximating. So I'm going to stop recording right now, and the next examples will be recording on the next video.